So, a couple of days ago, the Tailwind CSS team released a preview of the upcoming Tailwind 4.0. It's gonna release later this year and there are a lot of interesting changes to talk about that fundamentally change the way of how we write Tailwind code. The new setup is incredibly easy. Trust me, we're gonna get there. V4 is faster and one of the biggest changes in this new version will be the transition from a tool that feels like a JavaScript library to feel CSS native. And I really like that change. Let's talk about it. So one of the first things you're gonna notice when playing around with Tailwind 4 is how easy the setup is. Check this out. We're gonna set it up together. Let's declare an app component. This is just gonna return a div with a class name of text red 500 and some random content inside of it. And we're gonna export that as the default. Now this is a Vite project and check out how easy this is. We add Tailwind 4 as a plugin now and we can paste it inside of the plugins array right here and now all that's left the last step to completely initialize tailwind is this that's it right we add import tailwind css and once we start up the development server bam there we have our red text the setup is incredibly easy if you compare it to the old versions of implementing tailwind and here's why right the css first configuration why did they decide to implement it like this a major goal of tailwind css is making the framework feel css native and less like a javascript library once you've installed it you add it to your project with a regular css at import statement basically what we just saw now what does that allow you to do where's the difference to the old tailwind and the difference is right here. In version four and on, this right here, this syntax is how we declare custom classes in Tailwind CSS. And that's a really big difference if we compare it to the old version, let's say old Tailwind. Now in the old Tailwind, custom classes involve three steps and that involves JavaScript actually. We would have a globals.css file and in here you can declare any custom color, for example, that you want like dash dash custom dash red, anything that you want to reuse across your project. And then we could not use that as is in Tailwind. Instead, what we have to do is go first into our tailwind.config.ts and then tell it about the custom global CSS that we just created. Let's just kind of copy and paste this over. So we are kind of registering that color with Tailwind and only then were we allowed to use this custom red as a class name, my custom red, for example. And this step, through JavaScript land. Essentially, this second step right here is completely gone in Tailwind v4 because essentially what it allows us to do is completely skip this and go to our JSX layer right away. Oh, I forgot to mention this is JSX so that we can declare a variable in the globals and use it in the JSX right away. So while in the old Tailwind, it worked like this, where we declare a custom CSS variable that we can then use inside of our JS file in JavaScript land by telling Tailwind about these variables explicitly, this is how it works in v4. In the new Tailwind, creating custom class is as easy as using the theme directive. And then let's use a dash dash color and let's say my red. And I'm just gonna paste in some random color. Just assume that's red, just let this slide, okay? And then we can go into our file and already use this in our JSX. So we call this my red. So we're gonna prefix this with text to tell Tailwind that we actually want the text to be that color and we're gonna see well this is kind of pink but you get the point right declaring custom variables is as easy as that and that's super enjoyable and now in my opinion this is not even the coolest part of v4 of course it makes the setup so much easier but at the same time you do the setup once and then it's kind of done Basically, they built a completely own engine in Rust, by the way, so it must be fast and good. And this engine is a ground up rewrite using everything that they know about the framework now to better model the problem space, making things faster with a lot less code up to 10 times faster. We can do a full build of the Tailwind CSS website in 105 milliseconds instead of 960 milliseconds or the UI kit in 55 versus 341 milliseconds. Now, there's one thing I found very surprising about this. If we take a look at their GitHub repository in the new branch, kind of for the V4 release, you're going to notice something right here on the right hand side, and that is 0.1% of this repo is actually written in Rust. So a very, very tiny bit. But if we take a look at 
the actual project, you can see the aux side. That's how the engine is called, the folder right here. And this entire folder that I cloned to my desktop is 150 megabytes. And only the engine is already 52.8 megabytes. Now, I'm not sure if this is the best way to measure it. This is not zipped or anything. But just so I can get an idea of the proportions of how heavy the engine really is, you know, I just didn't really expect the engine to take up that much. And the one tool that Tailwind 4 uses to achieve this better speed is Lightning CSS, of course, also written in Rust. This tool is over 100 times faster than comparable JavaScript-based tools. It can minify over 2.7 million lines of code per second on a single thread. Now, that sounds pretty cool unless you realize that you really only ever kind of build your app once and it's not that important if you wait like 100 milliseconds or if you wait a second like does it does it matter that much I don't know. But anyways, it's kind of cool. It's 4.16 milliseconds for the build time. They're doing some benchmarks here. I don't think it's too interesting, but essentially that's what Tailwind uses, the one tool they use for that insane speed. And then the last thing I found interesting besides the speed and the thought of moving from JavaScript more to CSS native is that the syntax is just a bit nicer. I mean, look at this example. The group has and focus mm, kind of kind of nifty in the old Tailwind versions. And there's a bunch of other cool stuff in here. I'm gonna link the entire post. It's so worth reading. If you want, go ahead and read it. But one important note, if we go through this, you're gonna notice a lot of cool stuff. But Tailwind 4 Alpha is nowhere near ready for adoption, at least in my opinion. It's very cool to kind of test it out, try it out and see what's new. But at the same time, they acknowledge that it's just not ready. There's an entire roadmap to V4 and I'm really hyped because this is going to release about in the summertime of this year. But it also very clearly states that, hey, we acknowledge that this is not done. You probably should not use this in production. Um, you can try out the alpha if you want as the next tag. But if you have a job or something, then you probably shouldn't go to your boss and tell them that, hey, the old Tailwind is deprecated, let's use the four. That's probably not a good idea for now, Chief. Anyways, it's really cool to see how they go about solving some common pain points in Tailwind. And I'm honestly really excited to see where they take it. I think the way that Tailwind is heading is pretty neat. And I would love to hear your thoughts on it down in the comments below. That's gonna be it for this video. I'm gonna see you in the next one. Until then, have a good one and bye bye.